I was beginning to think I was in a bad mystery novel where everyone did it. Or a really bad mystery video game with a random killer that makes it look up to the very end like everyone did it. The private sources, the research she'd been up to, and the secret meeting with the Ripper. And she never told me a thing. You gotta wonder if Christopher Walken monologues like this to himself. Quinlan gave me such a dirty look as he left my office. Why does nobody like me? I like them. I just have problems opening up. Keep the doctor's available, ma'am. Hold, hold one moment, please. Hi, Quinlan. No word on your squeeze. Burton's keeping all the paperwork to herself for some reason. You know, that's a really nice outfit. I mean, it looks even better than when you wore it yesterday. In fact, they should start fighting right about now. They don't usually take this long. I just wish they'd do it and get it over with. Hey, how come you never came back to see me on my break? I'm here to see my girlfriend, Viv. She's in a coma, remember? What do you know? A guy who's faithful. Mm -hmm. Go on, run off and see your girlfriend. See if I can. Tell me if she croaks. Wow. I heard that. Curtis. <laughs> That's Viv, folks. She leads the league in rebounds. Yeah, this game has about 10 hours of gameplay, and six of them is going between the hospital lobby and this room. I said no, Joey. No, Joey, no, Joey, no. I don't want you here. I don't want you in this hospital. You gotta let me do my thing. I can find out what happened to this babe. Besides, you always call me in on these. If you don't this time, it's gonna look bad. No kidding. You think it's an accident that Magnata brought her here? Wow, you can really tell she's a neurosurgeon because she's got a stethoscope. You need one. Should've clipped his wings years ago. And try to pin this whole fucking thing on me. Or me. Which is why we do it my way, and I say no. No what? I just don't think tickling her is gonna wake her up. Yo, Quillen. Tell Dr. Burton here to let me save your friend. Oh, what? You mean the standing around doing nothing but hoping it'll just get better therapy isn't working? So let's see, if you're a neurosurgeon, you need a bank of supercomputers, an MRI machine, two giant halogen floodlights, and... Oh yeah, a stethoscope. What's Falconetti talking about? It doesn't matter. I'm not letting him do the procedure. Hey, let me try something. Hey, Catherine! How long have you all known each other? Do you know where I can find some sailors? Look, Quinlan, it's personal. It has nothing to do with Pal's case, believe me. Hey, Quinlan, two words. Second opinion. I wonder if I could ask the doctor what Catherine's heart rate is, because that question she could answer. What thing are you talking about, Eddie? Decking into this chick's consciousness. I can access her brain just like I can a computer. Well, what good is that? She's in a coma. She's not brain dead. Her essence, her personality, whatever. It's all still in there. I mean, if I could just get at it, there's a chance I could even rebuild her memory. It's like Psychonauts, only uglier and stupider. For one thing, you don't know for a fact how much of her essence she's retained. For another, you have psychological ice to deal with. You'd be fighting her mind. The strain could kill her. Man, if only we'd had this science 20 years ago, we could have saved Terry Shivo. You knew Magnata years ago. He was a very different man then. He used to be a scumbag. Now, he's a scumbag with a badge. Like Joe Arpaio? Why would he try to pin the murders on you? Well, he's gotta pin it on somebody to make a buck. I guess he thinks I'm an easy target. But it wasn't me! It was the Warriors! They shot Cyrus! Is your method dangerous? Were you kidding? Of course it's dangerous. We're not talking about accounting databases here. Decking into an organism's a lot harder than linking into a machine. You can't be overriding shit. You gotta watch where you're digging around. Emotions, memories, potentially very damaging. See, now me, I'd like to go into my girlfriend's head and install a Linux distro. Now that might fix some things, am I right, fellas, huh? I can make that image so real, you'll think it's breathing. You'll be able to stare the killer right in the eye. I'm sorry, I kind of spaced. What? Well, that would save Catherine and anybody else the Ripper had on his list. I mean, what's the real reason for preventing Falconetti from doing this, Burton? Well, it's not covered under your insurance. Do I detect a little magnata in the reporter's line of questioning? Whatever. <laughs> Do any damn thing you want. I'm going to the gym. Yeah, screw my patience. Good! And look a little flanky there, Claire. Tighten up those buns, baby! It's like we're really supposed to believe a doctor will just walk off the job to go work out. A real doctor would go golfing. We're gonna deck to Catherine's brain now? Damn straight. You can really get to know your girlfriend now. Here's the deal. With both of us being in there, 
can take everything I've got to maintain a link between us, to isolate a pathway to whatever's left of her consciousness. If her brain starts throwing ice at us, you're gonna have to fight it. Ooh, her brain's gonna be throwing ice like it's sticking snowballs in the freezer? I hate that! I think I can. David Patrick Kelly only agreed to do this role if he got to keep the wardrobe. Come on, Quinlan, are we gonna do this or not? Use your decking unit on the computer, we can help your girlfriend. Ah, oh, no. I already tried sticking my decking unit in my computer. It did not end well. We take you now to a time-lapse photo of Ozzy Osbourne's brain over the last 30 years. My god, it's full of stars! Oh no, monkey balls! It kind of sounds like the closing theme to Blade Runner. This game's pretty hard, but it's not exactly brain surgery. If only the human brain hadn't evolved the ability to sense little digital people running around inside it and deploy pink globules to attack them. Keep that ice off me! A fix on your girlfriend. There's definitely something there. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. All I heard was, You're good, Quinlan! Shoot that ice, Quinlan! It's not very good, but, you know, it still makes more sense than a scanner darkly. Purple brain, purple brain. Keep looking for that ice cream. I'm busy. So, uh, this sort of goes on like this for a while, then. Huh? Purple haze all in my brain. Keep that ice off me. A fix on your girlfriend. Definitely something. You know, I get really bad headaches sometimes, too. I mean, I wonder it might be because of brain bubbles. I do drink a lot of caffeine. Shoot that ice, Quinlan! Tiny bubbles in the mind Makes me nauseous, makes me wanna die Keep looking for that ice, Quinlan. I'm busy. Ripper, the ultimate sci-fi murder mystery and nitrogen narcosis simulator. Ah, uh, too many trans fats. Damn you, Atkins! Oh, I knew I shouldn't have bought the cheap brain tumbler. Fucking brilliant, asshole. I knew you couldn't hack this. We're not gonna get many cracks at it. You wanna try it again? Yeah, I think I'll spare you the pain of forcing you to watch me play that again. Now here's what you gotta do. Burton Cable, I've been feeding her as much of her personal background as I can. You need to bring her up to speed on what she knew when she was attacked. Use the information about the Ripper you think she may have known. That'll help her rebuild her memory. Right now, she's not even verbal. The more information she gets from you and Burton, the more she'll remember, the more she'll be able to tell us. She looks... so real. That's because everything you're seeing right now is streaming directly from her brain unmediated by any software. That's her, as her own mind's eye can see as herself. Be prepared. When you get close to her, you're gonna change. You'll look just as real. And she's floating, ladies and gentlemen. Now for my next trick, I will saw this woman in half. Well, you'll look just as real, except you've been posterized and shellacked. <coughs> this is how most of my dates end. Well, okay, there's usually more crying... and police. <laughs> okay, great, I'm glad I stopped by. We really got a lot accomplished today. <sighs> Initial play tests of the Virtual Boy were not very promising. Not bad for a first-timer. Was it good for you, too? <laughs> you kicked ass in there. Yeah, you did. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got about a month of girly mags to catch up on. Yeah, don't bother calling me, Quinlan, because I'm going to be ferociously jerking off for the next seven, eight hours. This sounds like the bridge of the Enterprise. Number one, open hailing frequencies. Lay in a course for Omicron City 3. Excuse me. Hey! What are you doing here? You're 
not supposed to be here. This place is off limits to unauthorized personnel. I'm Jay Quinlan from the Virtual Herald. Uh, who are you? Wait, let me check. Bob Epples, the new pathologist, and I'm I'm not to, I, I, I'm not to speak with you, Mr. Quinlan. I'm just Jesse Eisenberg. Well, what are you talking about? Wh- wh- where's Farley? Mr. Farley is no longer employed here. He 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 was let go. He was let go. Definitely let go. He was fired. Yeah, we started getting some complaints from families. He was he was he was, he was using dead bodies as ashtrays and leaving pizza crusts inside them. Where is Farley? I have no idea where Mr. Farley is. But from what I've heard about him, I suggest you look for him in a restaurant. One that specializes in fatty cuisine. <laughs> do to do Because <laughs> he's fat. Um, Why was Farley fired? I, I, I didn't ask, but I got the feeling that Mr. Farley liked to talk a little too much. And I don't plan on making the same mistake. So p- please leave, Mr. Quinlan, before someone sees me talking with you. This could have far-reaching implications, especially in the uh, hospital cafeteria. The income must drop 60-70% now. What do you got? A cotton back there, Quinlan? Cotton? Here's my stuff. I'm going into interrogation, Brandon. You know, a little police work. How's the coffee, Sarge? Mm, nice and hot. Oh, and that was the infamous hot coffee scene from Ripper. Guys got balls so big they collect the gum on the floor. They do. They drag. Yeah, and there's the mental image you'll never be able to shake. Soho precinct, Sergeant Brandon speaking. What's your problem? Check off, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I love it when he conducts routine business on the phone. <laughs> hey, watch. I bet I can steal walking stuff. Let's see. Yeah. ID card. Oh, I want to take his gun. Let's see. Oh, oops. Sorry. <laughs> take it. Yeah. Any new developments, Lou? Sure, but uh, nothing's getting us closer to the Ripper. Like what? Like earlier today, Magnata pulled two cops who have been on the Ripper case since the beginning, replaced them with new guys. Now that's bound to set the investigation back. That doesn't make any sense. That's what I say. I know. Tell me about it. I mean, forget about it. What are you going to do? You complain about it, the guy just flicks coffee on you. What's the buzz in the precinct on Falcon Eddie? Word is that outlaw is mixed up in this somehow. Magnata's pulled the hard copies on all of Falconetti's records, and he's had passwords put on computer files. There must be something there he's looking for. Or maybe something he's trying to hide. Yeah, it could be, and I think we all know how far he's willing to go to hide a watch. Lou, what do you know about the Hamilton Wofford murder? I haven't followed the case. I don't know much about the guy except that he did some work for the precinct some years ago. What kind of work? Magnata hired him... I don't know, five, six years back to build a virtual target range for the cadet cyberspace training. So Magnata knew him? Yeah! Yeah, that's probably why he took the case on, even though he's got his hands full with the Ripper. I bet one of the simulations that Wofford wrote involved chasing a virtual chicken around. We need crazy fast speed! I just love how a reporter can walk unescorted through all the sensitive areas of a police station. I guess it helps that only two cops exist in this entire world. I'm not a fucking dealer, man. Those were legal dosages for my personal use. I've owned down like four jobs at once, man. I need the fucking mental clarity, okay? See how much clarity you have when I'm done with you. Those senior citizens you sold that Lucidville B2 had severe arterial hypertension. Five of them pop blood vessels. In their heads. Now talk, fuckhead. Your days of dealing Viagra to nursing homes are over, my friend. And you thought the Ripper was unbelievable. You should have seen the orgy we had to clean up. What are you looking at? It was horrible. They were all twisted together in a weird rigor mortis orgy pretzel. Had to use a car jack to split them up. <laughs> Enough, okay? I sold those fossils some lucid be. Not my fault they had blowouts. I mean, what are you making a big deal out of this for? It's not like they weren't ready for the big sleep. It's touching to see you feel so deeply. They say underneath the skin of every junkie runs the blood of a poet. I wouldn't know. I'm just a cop who loves his job. Christopher Walken is the closer. Thursdays on USA. No performance now, mother. I'm in rehearsal. Anyway, because you've got Walken's security card now, you can go running around opening all the locked doors because, I guess, security cameras don't exist in police stations. Files are locked. Looks like I need some kind of ID card to open them. Ooh, I just thought of a way to stop people from stealing office supplies. Like, every time you want to go into the supply closet, you have to swipe a debit card. Hmm. 
Hmm. Vince Magnata's personnel file. Could make for interesting reading. He's single? Are you kidding me? I just, I would not have called that. And believe it or not, this is actually where I really got stuck in this game for a long time. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip ahead a little bit because this is actually really unfair in my opinion. The first thing you got to do is you've got to go back to Catherine's apartment and check out the book that was indicated by the laser earlier on in the game, which now, for some reason, you can actually open. Inside, there's a really weird electronic puzzle with, I think, six buttons that you have no idea what the combination is. And to find the combination, it turns out you have to decrypt her journal, which you got earlier in the game. I mean, how is that fair? How are you supposed to guess that now you can go back and open this book that previously wasn't even selectable? I mean, I guess it was kind of a loose end that the book was indicated so strongly before, and yet you could do nothing with it. But still, that's kind of weird. As for the encryption key, it's actually in Magnata's uh, police record. And the password is Scorpio, because one of the awards that Magnata gets is the Scorpio Award. That in itself is not entirely unfair, but it is a lot of guesswork. Okay, so you enter the password Scorpio, and the whole journal starts to very slowly decrypt until it just reaches a point, like in the fourth entry, where it just stops. Now, most of the stuff is just kind of fluff that you already know, where the it talks about Catherine suspecting, you know, the three people you already suspect of being the Ripper. But the key is... In the third entry of the very last paragraph, there's kind of a strange sentence that it says, uh, If everything works out, I'll be rich over this. At first, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. I lived in a ratty triplex for half a dozen years. That will never happen to me a second time. That is actually the combination to the puzzle in the Ripper book that was indicated by the laser of the crystal puzzle that you just solved. Because there are a certain number of numbers indicated in that last sentence, as in... I believe it's, at first one, I didn't have two nickels to rub together, and that represents 5-5, five, five because of nickels. Lift and ratty triplex is 3, half a dozen is 6. That will never happen to me again a second time, 2. So the combination is something like 1-5-5-3-6-2, uh, five, five, if you assume that number 1 is the topmost button. And to be honest with you, I have no idea how I solved this game back in the day, because I actually did beat this game... You know, before the internet, before there were any kind of strategy guides, I did this, but I have no idea how. I have truly regressed stupidity in my old age, because when I looked at the walkthrough, I was blown away that that was even a clue. You know, Once you've done that, the book gives you a little CD, and you can't just put that in any old computer, even though you've seen a ton of them up to now. You have to put it in Catherine's computer, that one that seemed to be kind of locked up in that one image. And when you do that, a funny little screensaver pops up with this equation on it, which doesn't really mean anything, but you have to write it down because it disappears rather quickly. This puzzle was a little easier because I remember in my wanderings finding a calculator. I mean, there's no point in trying to manually figure out the equation because it doesn't really mean anything, but if you type the equation exactly as it appears into the calculator on Catherine's desk, uh, there's a secret compartment in the calculator that opens up, revealing these two items. Pretty clever. A neat little place to store surveillance bugs. My god! Where does she get these wonderful toys? James Bond wishes he had this kind of espionage know-how and gadgetry. I mean, I just have to recap what kind of gadgets we've already seen from this woman so far. Like, a, a laser combination trap tied to a board of uh, hippie crystals that's tied to the to the zodiac symbol and and like a, a book that contains an electronic combination safe that hides a CD and the CD unlocks a password that ties into a really complex electronic safe that looks like a calculator that she keeps on her desk that contains two surveillance bugs one of which looks like an eyeball and another one that looks like a little cigar wrapper type thing which I guess is a clue on where to go next, going back to the police station so I can put this cigar-looking surveillance bug on one of his many cigars, which was very obviously hinted at because it's the most prominent thing on his desk. I mean, am I crazy? Is it just me, or is Catherine a way better reporter than Quinlan is? I don't even know where I'd begin to look for surveillance bugs that look like human eyeballs and cigar wrapper things. This is just amazing. Hey, several cigars have disappeared. Magnata will never even notice the bug is there. Even though this cigar is clearly a glaringly different color than all the other ones. Oh, now they all look the same. I guess it's okay. 
Metacog. Hold on. Oh, hey, Jake. No word yet on the vegetable. Ooh, that seemed harsh. Saw your story on the last murder. Look. You know I was just kidding about your squeeze croaking and all, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, God, man, it must have been awful. And I'll tell you something else. Magnata's been looking for you. I mean, I figured you should know, because he is not the kind of guy I would want looking for me. He isn't even the kind of guy I'd want to look at me. Is he here now? He just left. Coast is clear. Thanks, Viv. I appreciate it. Mm, not enough you don't. But you're welcome just the same. So if Magnata's been looking for me, why didn't he just talk to me when he clearly saw me at the front desk of the police station? Or maybe he's mad that I stole his ID card and used it to rifle through his confidential police file, so he might want to arrest me for that one. So you go to Dr. Burton's office in the hospital, and you start to ransack through all her stuff, basically scanning all the papers on her desk, which don't tell you anything you don't already know. But mainly you're here to place the surveillance bug, the one that looks like a human eyeball, because in here there's a skull that has two kind of googly eyeballs in it. But getting to it is, is kind of funny, because I spent about, no kidding, ten minutes trying to figure out how to get to the skull. And just, just look and see what I mean. Like, I can't select the skull. I can't approach it in any way here. You'd think it'd be a hot spot. You'd think I'd be trying to use the item. But no, I can't get any closer to it, and there's just, there's just no way to do it. I'm, I'm really struggling with this. It turns out you've got to uh, go closer to the door by about two feet, and then turn right, and now you can approach the skull to place the, uh, the surveillance bug eyeball in it, which, coincidentally, looks identical to the other eyeball. It's, it's almost like Catherine had this scouted and had one custom-made to precisely match the eyeball in her office. But I suppose I should go talk to Dr. Burton in the gym. Don't! Ah, hang on.